Him we have worshipped. I bring you greetings from the 71st Annual Convention. With the theme, Beyond Expectations. I know for sure whether the devil likes it or not. This season, God will do beyond your expectations. That amen is standing on one leg. Let me activate, let me encourage someone this morning. Because every word that comes forth from this altar shall not return empty. Before the end of this week, my God will do beyond your expectations. Several prophecies came through the mouth of our Father and the Lord during this convention. But some of them were very specific and I received them for you. For example, our Father and the Lord said, or God spoke through our Father and the Lord, that for someone hearing the sound of my voice right now, every of your dead projects shall resurrect. I don't know who that fellow is. That dead project is coming back to life. The Lord also spoke concerning someone. He says, your own time has come at last. And then again, he spoke concerning someone. Maybe the fellow is here or is watching online. He says, you are not where you ought to be. Because the fellow who should help you have refused to do so. But God said, he will not be able to sleep again until he has helped you. I received this for the singles in this church. Especially the sisters. Because the word of God came expressly. And God said, against all odds, when you are coming for next year's convention, you will come with your husband. And the word of God also came concerning someone here in this church. It says all those mocking you will come and rejoice with you. Anyone that you're sure you are deceiving, you better say amen to it. And the word of God also came. And God said, someone is asking and wondering about something. Is triple promotion possible? And God says, that fellow should be told. He says, I will make you a classical example. And again, of course, I received that for myself. <laughs> the Lord said for someone here this morning, he says, I don't care who the fellow is, anyone blocking your way to glory. The Almighty God will level him. And then this one came very powerfully. It says, For someone, you should get ready for hard work. Because I'm about to open many doors simultaneously. I'm sure you understand what that means. Many doors are opening for you 
So get ready for hard work. And then for someone again, the word of God came and it says you are fighting a battle of a lifetime. God is saying to that fellow, I have sent confusion into the camp of your enemies. Hmm. There's someone here who is pregnant. The word of God came concerning that fellow. Or someone who will be pregnant this month. It says, you will be pregnant this month. And that child you will bring forth will become a great man of God. All of you trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb, I receive that for you also. And the word of God came for someone. It says, because of you, all the yokes in your family will be destroyed. I'll just take a few more because there are quite a number. The word of God came for someone. He says, out of the present hardship, you will come out triumphant. Again, he said concerning someone, he says, you shall become a world figure. Now, these two more, and we'll begin to appreciate God. It says, the one who would be referred to as the greatest miracle of the decade is here in this church. And it says again for someone, <laughs> your promotion will never end. Amen. Of course, I received this two more for myself. It says, I will give you 10 years of uninterrupted job. Amen. And then lastly, because of our time, it says one day when great people sit down together and they are talking about the greatest they will point to you and they will say your case is exceptional just go ahead and begin to appreciate God for every spoken word over your life and over your destiny I shall become the greatest miracle of the decade. Amongst the greatest, I will be exceptional. I will enjoy 10 years of uninterrupted joy. Whoever is blocking my way, my God will level them. My promotion will never end. Out of this present hardship, I will come out triumphant. For my sake, the yokes in my family, they are destroyed forever. I shall become a world figure. Begin to speak over your life. The words you have heard this morning. God will activate them in your life and will bring them to pass. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we bless your holy name this morning. We thank you for the success of the 71st annual convention. We thank you for using our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboye, to be a blessing to every one of us. Lord, we thank you for the words of prophecy that we have received. 
I pray in the lives of these, your children, including myself, that all of these prophecies will come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in this service, we ask that you glorify your name. Heal the sick, deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, and save souls like never before. Because this is Prosperity Sunday, please, Lord, prosper the works of our hands and open new doors for your children. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The one who is sure that is moving to his next level, can you jump up and shout it loud, hallelujah. Now, prophetically, welcome your neighbor and say to him, neighbor, congratulations. I will see you at the top. Say that to at least three persons. I will surely, if you are not prophesying to anyone, it means you are satisfied with where you are. I will see you at the top. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, it was an awesome convention. Some of us didn't want to leave. The anointing was so much that we didn't want to leave the redemption city anymore. But thank God that we are here. And we also thank God for everyone that traveled for the convention. God brought us back safely. Can you wave your hands to him and say thank you, Jesus? And just yesterday, we were at the city of Abavo for our Light Up Crusade. Uh, some of you are not clapping because you were not there. In case you don't know, Abavo is my village. And we went there, we saw, we conquered. It was an awesome, awesome, awesome crusade. And there was serious harvest of souls. God showed up yesterday. And every one of you that made it to that crusade, the Lord will honor you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, because of what the Lord did for us during the convention, we'll be thanking him specially today. We'll be taking a thanksgiving for the success of the annual convention. So, before we, when we finish our tithes, we will take the offering uh, in this first service. Thanksgiving offering. Our Father and the Lord instructed us, uh, even if he did it, for all that the Lord did for us. Over 500 persons went from Champions Cathedral. Um, and we came back better than we went. In addition to that, quite a number of our ministers were ordained as deacons and deaconesses, um, assistant pastors, I'm sure you'll be seeing them as they mount the pulpit uh, to take one uh, of the activities or the other. I pray that very, very soon it will be your turn to be ordained. <laughs> Say amen now. Yeah. Aha. <laughs> amen. Turn with me to Job. Chapter 32 and verse 8. Choir, God bless you. Job chapter 32 and verse 8. After hearing all of the prophetic declarations, um, maybe we shall just uh, round that up, but I will share a few things and then we will round up the service. 
Job 32, verse 8. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. This morning in uh, within the very limited time I have, I will be speaking on the force of inspiration. The force of inspiration. The force of inspiration. What is inspiration? Inspiration is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something. The process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something. Especially to do something creative. That is inspiration. The process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something. Especially to do something creative. And that is why the Bible is telling us that there's a spirit in man, the inspiration of the Almighty. Give it him understand. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21, it says, And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. We have hundreds and thousands of people gathered here this morning. But it is possible that only one fellow can hear one thing that will change his life permanently. Others may just be in the service and they wait and watch and the time rolls by. But someone will be inspired by the word he will hear this morning. And his life will be totally transformed. Amen. Whoever that fellow is, let me hear you shout it loud. Amen. Amen. Inspiration is so powerful. That those who have not heard what you heard. Will think you are mad. And those who don't understand where you are going will think you are lost. I pray for someone here. May my God inspire you. If that's the only prayer you will pray this morning before you leave here. May you receive inspiration from God Amen. for the journey ahead of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometime in March last year, was it March? Yes, I think in the month of March. We were to launch our bank in the month of April. So in the month of March, I gathered all of the key members of staff that were to commence the journey with me. And I invited a very renowned economist in Nigeria, a very good friend of mine. And I said to him, come and speak to us. Come and motivate us for the journey ahead because we are about to start a journey. It was our strategy section. And the man came. When he took the mic, the first thing he said to us, he said, Emmanuel, I, I don't want to excite you. I will tell you the way I feel. He said, this is not the best time to start a bank in Nigeria. 
I didn't wait for him to land. I replied to him, this is my best time to start this bag. Because I know what I heard. I know what I received. When people don't hear what you hear, or don't understand where you are headed, they think you are mad. One year after, I think last month, I invited him again. And I reminded him, I said, last year you told us that this is not the best time to start a bank. What do you have to say now? <laughs> I pray for someone here today. My God will inspire you in the name of Jesus. The word that will translate you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. of inspiration will tell you number one that wherever you are is not the best you can be you can be better than where you are today in 2nd Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 to 17 2nd Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 to 17 it tells us the story of the Shunammite woman. Very rich woman, very wealthy, very powerful, very connected. She knew the king. She was connected to the commander in chief of the armed forces of the, of the country. The husband was a very wealthy man. She had servants at her beck and call. So when the man of God spoke to her, and said, hello, ma. By this time next year, you will have a son. The woman looked at the man of God and laughed. But thank God for inspiration. When the man of God left her, I'm sure the voice of inspiration hit her. And that voice may have said to her, you might be a very great woman. But right now you are still not complete. And she received the word of the man of God with faith. And at the appointed time, the son came. I pray for you today. The voice of inspiration that you need to hear to make you complete in life. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, because of our time, and I'll begin to round up. Inspiration is so powerful, and that's why I talk about the force. Because it takes you out of your comfort zone and gets you fired up from your belly. Anyone operating under the force of inspiration is never normal in the eyes of men. Anyone operating under the force of inspiration is never, never normal. Because you operate with some kind of energy that people will not understand. There's something driving you that you can't even explain. When you read the account of the spies that were sent to check out the land and report back to Moses. In Numbers chapter 13, when you go to verse 30, after they have submitted their report, two people came with a minority report. NIV said, Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. It didn't add up. 
They saw giants. They saw all manner of things that could contend with their taking over. But this man said, no. There's something that he knows that others don't know. There's something he has heard that others didn't hear. There's something he understands that others don't understand. And he said, come on, what are we waiting for? Let's go and take over. Any man under the force of inspiration works, operates with so much energy that it's difficult to comprehend. Something keeps pushing you. Something keeps driving you. You are inspired to deliver. I pray for someone here. May that force be activated in your life. You know, sometimes you see me, I always talk about Daddy Gio. What do you think is driving an 81 years old man to be doing what he's doing now at his age? 81 is still fasting. 81, he's still doing let's go fishing. 81, he's still holding crusades. I was with him in the U.S. when we went for Light Up Crusade. After I've done like three with him, I had to return. The man was still going around the whole of the countries. At 81. Because there's something firing him up that is keeping him going. I pray that the force of inspiration will take you from where you are to where you ought to be in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 the Bible says give it to me in King James Version please. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now this scripture in the Bible was what the Wright brothers saw. And they were inspired to manufacture, to invent the aeroplane. Mount up with wings as eagles. It dawned on them that it is possible for men to fly. And they started coming up with models of things that can fly. Like an eagle. While they were doing it, people were laughing at them. They were mocking them. Until they finished because they were inspired. So they tell me if these guys did not manufacture the aeroplane how can you move around especially in Nigeria today that it is difficult to travel by road those of us who traveled yesterday I'm sure you understand what I mean From here to above, ordinarily takes you an hour. But we did it yesterday, four hours to four hours back. But these men were inspired. And they did the unusual. Let me tell you, when you are running with the force of inspiration, people will mock you because they don't understand where you are going. People will laugh at you and they will say something is wrong with this fellow. But I pray for you today. My God will inspire you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Why do you need inspiration? I'll just give you two or three points and we close. Number one, anyone that is truly inspired of God lives a fulfilled life. Please take note. Why do I say so? When you are driven by the force of inspiration, you are always thinking of creative options. You are looking forward to the next thing that you need to accomplish. Whatever is happening around you is, does not matter because there is something that is driving you from the inside. You are excited about taking the next step. You look forward to the next assignment ahead of you. Because there is a force of inspiration that is pushing you. I've done banking for 32 years. But guess what? Every day looks like I just started. As when people ask me, you don't, you, you, you are always on the move. I say yes, because there is something to do. I had a board meeting on Friday. On Friday, yes. Very long meeting. Our board meetings usually last for hours. We finished at about 4 p.m. My people in Port Harcourt called me that I needed to, you know, take a call and meet one of our very, you know, Prospective customers that they've been looking at. I flew into Port Harcourt. Had that meeting. After a very long board meeting. Finished the meeting at about 8 o'clock. Drove down from Port Harcourt to worry because I know we are going to Abavo for the crusade. I got into worry at about 12 midnight. On Friday, Saturday morning, we were, we were out. We got to Abavo, it was a huge success. This morning, I am here, and I'm not feeling anyhow, because there is a force of inspiration. Anyone that is truly inspired of God will live a fulfilled life. It brings out the creativity in you, you are more productive. You are excited with what you do. It is difficult to find a man that is inspired of God to begin to think of committing suicide. I tell you naked truth. Any man you see that has gotten to the height of frustration and is beginning to think of taking his life, he lacks inspiration. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. Let the price of fuel become 1,000 naira per liter. Because you are inspired. It doesn't stop you. I pray for someone here. You will surely reach your goal. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. When a man is inspired, you are self-motivated. You don't think of, you know, how to cut corners. You don't think of, you know, how to do some funny, funny things. You are driven by the motivation that comes from inside. Because you are well, well ahead. Of where you are going. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 9 to 11. Paul the apostle. Was talking about himself. He says I am the least of the apostles. I'm not even meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church. Of God. 
10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Paul came last. He joined the, you know, the, the cadet, the rank and file of the apostles as the last entrant. But he carried in him, in his inside, divine inspiration. And that force kept pushing him. When they tell him, look, don't enter this country. If you get there, they will kill you. He said, I'm going there. Check all the books he wrote. He, was the, he wrote more books than any other apostle. Because something was firing him up to deliver at the highest level. Let me tell you again, anyone that is driven by the force of inspiration can never be a mediocre in life. You can never be a mediocre. Because you are running <laughs> with a force that people don't understand. And anyone that is driven by the force of inspiration will always be ahead of his peers. Write this down. I've told my people, stop doing peer analysis. When you say peer analysis, you compare yourself with the people you started with. Because by the time we had done six months, we had overtaken all the people that were ahead of us. So I told them, when you are doing analysis, don't, don't put me side by side with those that we started with. Because we have left them. Why? Something is driving us that they don't understand. Look at Champions Cathedral. What has brought us this far is inspiration. Where can you find a parish in three years has become a province? I say three years because we started reporting as a province in 2019. In case you don't know. We only became formally announced as a province in 2022. We have started reporting as a province 2019. And by the grace of God, it is without sweat. When you are inspired, you sweat less and deliver more results. So my prayer for someone here, before you leave this meeting, may my God inspire you. Stand on your feet. Talk to the Lord this morning. Father, release unto me your inspiration from above to do uncommon things and to excel in every area of life. Any man that must operate in the realm of divine prosperity must be inspired by God. Talk to him this morning. Father, I receive grace. To be inspired of you this morning. Let the force of inspiration be activated in every area of my life. Make sure you are praying and you are not murmuring. Oh, Father, inspire me. Inspire me this morning.
Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. And I'd like you to talk to the Lord. Bring before him your special prayer request this morning. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, hear me this morning. God can only inspire those that are truly connected to him. You are trusting him for his inspiration this morning. But you know you need to settle with him in one way or the other. Just lift up your right hand while you are standing. Lift up your right hand. Lift it up very well. You know, you need to settle with your maker so he can inspire you afresh. Lift up that right hand. God bless you. I can see those hands up. If your hand is up, I'd like you to come forward before the altar. Just come. I want to pray specially for you. Just come. Your hand is up. Just come. Don't miss opportunities like this. Inspiration of the Lord that give it understanding. Come and settle with him this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those of you standing before the altar, just talk to him now. Ask him for his mercy and ask him to inspire you beginning from now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father in heaven, I bring before you your sons and your daughters standing before your altar this morning. I thank you for their lives and I thank you for this privilege you have given to them to reconcile with you. Lord, please have mercy on your children. Forgive all their sins. Cleanse them with your blood and draw them closer to you. The grace they need to serve you better from now on and to be reconnected totally to you. Please release to them afresh in the name of Jesus. By the reason of this decision they have taken this morning, Lord, I pray that a new wave of inspiration will hit your children afresh in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, behold this entire congregation. 
They have asked of you for something that they consider very, very important to their lives. From your altar, I pray that all their prayer requests this morning, Lord, you turn them to miracles and testimonies in the name of Jesus. Lord, you have said to us that we need to be inspired of you. Every one of these, your children, trusting you for divine inspiration for their next level. I ask that before they leave this meeting, that force will hit them now in the name of Jesus. And everything that speaks to limitation in life and in destiny, I command them rolled away in the mighty name of Jesus. My Father and my God, in times like this, you differentiate between those that are yours and those that are not. That differentiating factor, that inspiration your children need to carry on and to break through their next level, Father, release to them afresh in the name of Jesus. Put an end to every frustration. Open new doors to your children. Enlarge their coasts. Let the prophetic declarations emanating from the annual convention find expression in our lives. And by this time next year, when your children shall look back to what you have done in their lives and with their lives, they will know of a truth that you have turned them to become mighty men of valor in their spaces in the name of Jesus. I come against every yoke of failure, of shame, of barrenness, of fruitless efforts, of poverty, of lack. Father, all such yokes, I command them destroyed in the name of Jesus. Make ways for your children. Send help to them. Open new doors to them. Enlarge their coasts. Breathe upon their businesses and let it be well with them. I pray for anyone that came for this meeting sick in any part of his or her body. Part of the total package of prosperity that you give to your children is that they live in divine health. I pray for every sick person in the house. The hand of the Lord touch you this hour. And restore your health again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Put your hands together for the Lord. God bless.